like I like this enough to like research and understand it by myself, but I don't like this enough to do it as a career. The mask went adding and I was like, Charmaine, hey, we need to like backpedal. Yeah. I didn't really understand what tech was. Like I didn't, yeah. if someone was telling me tech, I said, what, do you know what I mean, what are you talking about? Kind of situation. In between that, I got my results. So, you know, when you finish uni and then you get your results, yeah. it's like a period that I figured I got a two two and I was like, yeah, I'm finished. Because even though it was hard with tech because you don't see black people working in tech. You don't see women working in tech. You don't see black women working in tech. So sometimes you have to be delusional yeah. because I'm like, you know what? Someone in this world had done it. So I'm not the first. So why Like, why not? Like, oh, because I got two, two. Other people, so other people got two twos and got it. You might as well try because if I didn't try, I would have not got the job. Mm -hmm. What would you say is the best way for them to, to like pivot into tech? tech industry. Welcome to the Takeoff Experience where I sit down with highly driven people to talk about their journey, their failures and their successes. If you want to take off in your career, your business, your finances or your mindset, then this podcast is for you. This episode is sponsored by Money Hub, a secure money management app that helps you to manage your money with ease. The Money Hub app provides you with a single view of all your accounts by letting you connect your bank accounts, your savings accounts, investment accounts, your credit cards all in one place. To help with your money goals, Money Hub has features that allows you to track your incomings versus your outgoings every single month and also allows you to set and track your spending budgets every single month too. It's a fantastic app, right? Well, you can download the Money Hub app for free by tapping the link in my description. You can use the Money Hub app free for six months with no auto renewal. And if you really like the app, then you can continue using it for only £1.49p per month. It's a deal of the century, right? Well, make sure to go and download the app right now. Enjoy the rest of the episode. Welcome back to the Takeoff Experience. We have a special guest in the building, Charmaine. How are you doing today? I'm good, thank you. Thank you for having me. Very, very welcome. So, working today, right? Yeah, working. Came from work, child. Straight from work. Mad, 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 mad. Eight hours, <laughs> yeah? Work. No, not, no, not really. I just waited like longer a bit to, at work. And then I was just like, yeah, I'll come here after. So it's fine. I actually did the same thing. Yeah. <laughs> Listen, I, I actually I, did the same thing. I appreciate all the people that like to put like yeah. hours, extra hours in. But am I that type of person? Mm, no. <laughs> <laughs> we'll talk, we'll talk about that actually with me. With me, with me. So what, you just do the normal uh, nine to Listen, five. Listen, God does not reward struggling. <laughs> if like, obviously... Well, we'll get into this later. Mm. When you work for consultancy, everything, you don't really get like set hours mm. because it's project delivery. Yeah. So don't get me wrong. Sometimes if like you need to get something either to deliver or you need something from the client, you yeah. do those extra hours. However, like I don't like to go out of my way to be doing extra hours, extra hours. My, my manager goes home, I'm going home. Like he goes home on time or I she be like, yeah, I've got my train to go. Yeah. Okay. okay. So, Flexible. I like that. Yeah, you have to put your boundaries. You yeah, have to, you have to put your boundaries. It's true. <laughs> So who's Charmaine? Charmaine. Mm. Charmaine is, um, oh, you put me on the spot, Charmaine. <laughs> <laughs> Charmaine is a management consultant. She works in tech. She's a tech influencer. And she's all around good vibes. That's it. All around good That's vibes. All around yeah. good vibes. I love that. <laughs> <laughs> um, so wanted to go back a little bit. Yeah. And talk about your story. Where where are your parents from? I'm from Zimbabwe, guys. Is it? Yeah. Oh, nice. My parents and me. I'm from Zimbabwe too. So we're you all were from, born there. Yeah, I was born in Zimbabwe, but I came here when I was like one. So I was okay. brought up here. Okay, so that's what but, you're Yeah, but I always, yeah. I will, before I'm British, I always say I'm Zimbabwean. So love that. Have you yeah. been back since? Yeah, yeah, I've been back. Last time I went was 2018, but I'm gonna go back this year. So it should be good. Awesome, awesome. How often before then were you going back? <laughs> oh, so, and this, no, I'm not trying to catch you out, man. I'm just curious. To, I just trying to catch you out. So I went in um 2018, mm. and I think before that I must have gone in maybe like 2015 or something else like that. And then um I can't remember the other years, but when I was like in primary school, I went back a couple of times. But um I like speak to my cousins and everything. Okay. As much as like I'm British, I feel like yeah, I always say I'm Zimbabwean first. If anything, <laughs> if was it like when you got there? For you, for Zim, um, yeah. I can't speak the language. Okay. I can understand, or it's more like you know when uh, at home my parents speak to me, but like more like forty percent of the time, mm. but sixty percent of the time is English, and it's okay. more like just like one sentence. Yeah. Like, do you know what I mean? So I can understand everything. I understand like a quotation of what someone's saying, or you know, but I can't. My mouth, it just 
the pronunciation yeah. is bad. So okay, that makes so you sense. can you can you can speak it, but it's just that they might just say to you, "Yo." Yeah, like yeah, yeah like, like if I speak to my grandma, grandma's laughing at me. Like it's comedy. <laughs> it's comedy to her. She's like, "Oh, look at you trying." So yeah. <laughs> Nah, nah. I mean, I can't speak no Nigerian at all, so I can't even. No Nigerian? Fight. You mean what language? No, only English. No, that, my, my language is really it's only English. Only. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Oh, <laughs> no. only... Wow. Okay, I feel better now. Feeling, England, feeling so, better. So, I like... English, it? <laughs> so, were you raised that most of your life in London? Yeah. So, I live in, well, I lived in just outside of London. So, it's mm. Bexley Borough. Okay. So, it's... I know that. Yeah, see, it's it's London Borough. But people, people try and say because, like, it's zone five, four, five, six-ish, mm. it's not, like, London. Yeah. But it is, it is, it is guys, it's London. Yeah. But, yeah, so that's where... That's, that's, that's where you grew up. up yeah, yeah. Were you uh, schooling in that area? Mm-hmm, well? Yeah, schooled yeah. in Bexley, in Bexley Borough, and everything grew up there. Very much, like, southeast London, south, mm. south, southeast more yeah what was Bexley like for you growing up like the area like what was that what was that like so um personally like so in primary school definitely more obviously white people than black people I feel like everybody who lives in Bexley kind of feels that um it's so weird with Bexley Borough because the time that we moved or like I grew up like from like early 2000s it was like the influx of a lot of black people moving and migrating there so Places like Erif, Bexley Heath, Belvedere, Thamesmead, that's where a lot of like bad people were migrating. So even though it was like a white, predominantly white area, going to school, we, you know, after like year one, year two, you kind of see more black people, more yeah. and more black people. However, there was still always more white people. And I would say in like secondary school, it was like, I would say 60, 60% white people. Really? Yeah, it was 60% white people. Oh, but for me, they were lovely. So I never had, I went to all girls school and yeah, so white people, black people mixed, yeah. it was fine. Um, however, sometimes in the areas though, you had like certain like racist gangs and all that kind of okay. stuff, um, like racist attackers. If, yeah, so you have stuff, you had stuff like that. Mm. However, school wise, for me personally, I think the school I went to was very much like a multicultural, a Roman Catholic girls' school. school. But I know other yeah. people who lived, who went to different schools, mm. who they had like it was racist, like okay, literally the really? school was racist. Yeah, so okay. maybe it's just my experience in my specific mm. school being an all girls school. So okay, mm. mad, wow, that's that's yeah, yeah. I heard about Bexley back then, and yeah. <laughs> mm-hmm. I heard about yeah. Bexley. Mm-hmm. It's not like that now. Yeah, it's, it's yeah, it's so multicultural. Yeah, you would even think it's like anywhere else in London. Exactly, nowadays, right? like exactly. It's, it's, it's changed. It's changed a lot from what I was hearing about it back in the days. Exactly. Like, wow, that's mad. Yeah. and like for you personally, like, what mm-hmm. were you like in school? Did you were you somebody that liked to study, not study? Some people. Look, some oh, well, people are A students. No, know. I wish so. Uh, do you know what? I, I would say I always tried. Okay. So um, in school, always friends, with the, all the black girls, you know, I was in that big group of black girls. Mm-hmm. I would say I was the joker. Of, <laughs> I was the joker. The joker of okay. the, I was the joker of the group. Okay. Um, same with like lessons as well. Very, very jokey. Got on with everybody. It doesn't matter if they were black and white, whatever. I was just one of those people that I would talk to if I felt like, oh, we got on, I'll talk to you. But yeah, I was part of yeah the big black girls group. Okay. And yeah, I was outspoken. I feel like personality wise, I'm just kind of stayed. You stayed stay, like yeah, yeah, stayed like that. Yeah, yeah. stayed like I love that. that. Yeah. Love that. And you ended up going to university, right? Yeah, I went to what, uni. What, what did you study? I studied cognitive and clinical neuroscience. Wow. Yeah. Uh, okay. We're gonna have to <laughs> how we went there to technology. Hello. Cognitive. Yeah, cognitive and clinical neuroscience. What yeah. It? So it's it's just Where did the, that come from? It's criminal minds, guys. Okay. Oh, I was watching too much criminal minds. <laughs> I did not know. It was criminal you know what? I probably would have studied that subject if I knew that existed. Because I, yeah. I love CSI. Love CSI. Wow. That's that's it. My sisters, and um, they loved watching CSI. I used to watch some CSI, Criminal Minds, NCIS, anything like crime related yeah. where you would have to understand um, the person's like psyche and why they did things. So basically what neuroscience was is... Half of it was the brain, physical anatomy, drugs, how that affects the brain and how that affects how you act. And the rest of it was basically psychology and um, sociology based. So it was best of both worlds. So I could understand um, neurologically and scientifically why 
you know, someone can, can be wired or hard drive to act a certain way and how okay. genetics plays so a part in that. And then the psychology is just, you know, understanding how physical environmental factors as well to play a part in that and the combination of both and how that kind of makes a person so okay wow yeah. that's so interesting so what happened what, what like like obviously you finish you yeah finished that right graduated graduated yeah and what, what, what was like the first job after uni was tech, tech <laughs> yeah tech how did yeah. we get there how did we get oh, to technology god it's, so okay so in my last year um we had um phd students that would mm. come and basically talk about their experiences yeah. and um, their steps, basically. So the traditional route, when you study cognitive neuroscience or any type of like research-based, yeah. research-based um, university degree, is that you go, you either go into research where you perform, you think of theories, and then you prove theories with participants. You know, in labs, you write up yeah. labs, and then you know you publish reports and publish papers, or you go into the medical fields, um, or you know or work or use your skills and you adapt. So in that last year, my final year, we had a PhD student. She was talking about how she was working with um, people who pled criminally insane. And okay. um, then I was like, okay, criminal minds, it's coming, it's coming. Yeah. I was like, okay. And then she spoke about her life and what she was doing in terms of, yeah, I wake up at this time. I, you know, go to this mental hospital and I do this and do that. And then she was talking about her money. Right, her salary. And it didn't appeal to me. And I was like, can I swear? Yeah. Am I allowed to say? I was like, shit, I can't, <laughs> I can't come and suffer. I was like, I can't. I was like, shit, I can't come and suffer. Like, I was like, this is like, I like this enough to like research and understand it by myself, but I don't like this enough to do it as a career. Yeah. If that makes sense. Yeah. And I felt like. What was the salary? Oh, I don't want to be rude. It was like, I think it was like 21 or 23K, but the energy of what That's she was, so the, the energy of what she was doing yeah. compared to her salary. And I think the hospital was like outside of London as well. So I would yeah. have to go from my zone six in Erif and then go to, and and then go there. And then, and then I spend money and then I have to eat. And then I like things on top. I like to eat. Oh, <laughs> I like, I like to eat. My nephews and nieces, they like nice things. Auntie, I want the latest doll. And oh my God, like the mass went adding. And I was like, Charmaine, hey, we need to like backpedal. Yeah. So um, yeah. And then we had like a course on like, oh, this is like artificial intelligence and how, bear in mind, I'm studying the brain. So talking about how they're trying to replicate the brain yeah. in AI. So I was like, oh, okay. Something towards AI. And I was like, oh, what, what jobs can I get in tech? And because I know people are talking about like, oh, there's money in tech or like, you know, but I didn't really understand what tech was. Like I didn't, yeah. if someone was telling me tech, I said, what, do you know what I mean? What are you talking about? Kind of situation. So I went, researched how to get into tech. Then I went on Target Jobs. So um, if you don't know, Target Jobs is like a place where you can apply for different grad roles. Um, we're doing like, a, oh, IT is just not for the boys event where okay. um, different companies would come in and they will tell you like different parts of um, of tech roles and how the routes and how you can get in there. So I applied for the event because you had to yeah. apply for the event. I got in there. Those amazing companies like Just Eat, BlackRock, all these fintech companies, um, different companies and they were literally telling me oh there's testing there's this there's that there's software development there's software engineering there's tech sales there's this is that so I was just writing 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 and then I had to look at oh the recruiters were there so they were telling me what they look for in a CV and everything yeah. I was thinking shit I can't code I can't you know I don't I don't know what you guys are talking about <laughs> do you know what I mean like my CV is talking about my lab work or whatever yeah. so you know and and the Harrods working at Harrods like that, that was literally it in sales um so when then I update my CV to show that I was interested in IT. So that was like a task in itself. Did that. And I kept just going to events and speaking to people and people are like, oh, this is what it would be really good if you did this. It would be really good if you did that. It would be really good, you know, if you said that you worked online digitally, digitally. And then in uni, I made sure that I was always part of people's societies or I did like extracurricular stuff um, or like being like a student ambassador. And then I would have to like sign up and get people's details. And then I would twang that, put that on my CV and say that I was like using digital um, digital marketing yeah. to get people to sign up to these student forms or whatever or ambassadorships. So, um, yeah. And then I went, I got, I was applying like, you know, if you if you're in uni, you know after when you try and get that grad job, yeah, that mad. <laughs> is mad. mad. You're applying, applying, applying. Um, 
And then in between that, I got my results. So, you know, when you finish uni and then you get your results, yeah. it's like a period that I figured I got a 2-2 and I was like, yeah, I'm finished because everyone knows, like, it's mm. always this consensus, like, hey, if you go to uni, you got 2-2. Two, two. Mm -hmm. Like, what? You got 2-2. Mm -hmm. like, it's mm -hmm. always like, oh. So, yeah. got my 2-2. Two, two. I was thinking, okay, I made it hard for myself. Mm. What am I going to do? So I just didn't put on the grade on my CV. Okay. I kept, yeah, I, just, I didn't put the grade on my CV. I was like, that if they ask, so they ask. Yeah. If it, if the requirement said two one, I didn't care. I just applied anyway. Okay. I didn't. I didn't. I didn't if they explicitly told me, I, I, I put. Uh, yeah, I got two two. If they declined me, okay, cool. But some places they didn't ask. Oh, what did you get? Whatever, whatever. They just, I just put that. Did cognitive clinical neuroscience. <laughs> don't need to know. You don't need to know why. Right? That to is know. so smart. So many people never think about that. Wow. I wish I thought. I, I, I wish I thought about that because I got two. You two got two. two. <laughs> <laughs> I wish I thought about that. This is two two Honestly, squad. The stuff that I was doing, yeah. Oh, that's gonna be for another day because this is about you today. So oh, that's for another day, listeners. We'll, we'll hey, get there one day. no. God, the two two pressure was on my head. Yeah. What like? Yeah, I was like, no, it's okay. I was like, no, it's not okay. Yeah. Like, it's okay. It's only, I was it's like, feel embarrassed nah. because it's like, yeah. everybody, that's what, it's so weird because I don't know where the two one, I guess the two one comes from like the employers, but yeah. it's so weird because that almost becomes everybody's goal. Like, you know, 100%. Not even the first, two one. Two one. Two one like, uh, everybody. For me, goal. it was even like, first was like, oh yeah, like you're really, you're really yeah. trying, but like two, two, like two one was like standard. Oh, you yeah. went to uni, you finished uni, you yeah. get two one. Yeah, two one. So normal. you got two yeah. two. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Like yeah. jump scare, like two, two, two. Like honestly, I that, the, 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 when I got my result, I cried. I was like, oh my gosh. But um, but like I know I did a hard course, so I was just like, it's what it's what it is. Do you know what I mean? And I tried. That's the thing. Like, like I said, I wasn't smart in school. I just tried and I would get like the subjects I liked, I excelled yeah. in. The subjects I didn't like, I'll get like a B or C. So I was like, it's whatever. Same with um, neuroscience. I tried. That's all I could, you know, mm -hmm. that's all I could ask for really. And yeah, so I applied, applied, applied. And then I got my first grad. Um, I got a response. Like, oh, could you come in for a um, assessment center? Mm -hmm. So a lot of grad schemes, they want you to do assessment centers. Yeah. Assessment centers essentially is when they test you on different skills. Mm -hmm. So sometimes they would give you, in this case, sorry, they gave me a technical test. Um, so I was applying for a technical consulting role. They gave me a technical test. Half of it was coding and half of it was testing based. Seriously? Yeah. So the coding bit, God, I don't know, maybe I was drawing. <laughs> I d listen, Coding's X equals word, right? this, this, or that. It's your yeah. language, basically. It's, your own, it's the own language. I can't even, like, for the life of me, even like a couple of years later now, I can't even tell you what, if it was a language, what language they were asking me, what they even asked me to do. Like, I literally yeah. just looked at it and I was like, yeah, no. However, I did know the second bit, which was just like, oh, I remember this question like, oh, if ATM's broken, mm -hmm. what, what are the different things that could go wrong with the ATM? I was like, oh, showing the incorrect balance, showing someone else's balance. Do you know what I mean? And then I, I made sure like I filled that page up with just something I did yeah. know. Then you had like the HR test. Mm. So they ask you, oh, what's your motivations? Why do you want to work for this company, et cetera? Then you have the group, like a yeah. group task. And then you have like a other competency test. But it wasn't really that serious because with grad schemes, depending on what they're hiring you to do or if they're upskilling you or they're training you, they don't sometimes require you to have all the knowledge. Yeah. But you need to look like someone who's eager to, you know, okay. learn, if that makes sense. Yeah. So flops the coding test did okay on the other part of the test and then um I felt like it went well on the other you know those other tasks and then yeah then they called me up and said yeah yeah you've got the job so okay. I was like woohoo so yeah wow yeah so that's how that's how you got exactly into it. so June gradual well, graduated in June yeah got my got my grade in June had my graduation in July and then the day after carnival I was I started my first job so oh my gosh. yes and that's like what end of August to September so. that's crazy yeah it That's quite absolutely quick. crazy. So mm -hmm. what made you like bounce back? Because, and obviously I know why I'm asking this because obviously I, I you know, I felt like similar to, to mm -hmm. in your situation. What made you like bounce back? What do you mean? So after I got my T2? Yeah. Like what made you, okay. I was like, okay, cool. I'm going to start applying for text and you kind of not yeah. give up. You kind of just went for it. I feel like, so I gave myself time to cry. So I cried for like maybe like two, three days. I didn't speak to everyone two, three days. My friends were like, my friends, they were like, Charmaine, where are you? Da, 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 da. I was not talking to anyone. My mom was trying to like comfort me. It's okay, blah, 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 blah. My dad was like, Johnny, you tried, whatever. I think 
then after the crying period, I said, like, at the end of the day, you can't, I can't change my grades. Mm. However, like, you can't, I can't fake my ambition and where I want to to go into. Like, yeah. even though it was hard with tech because you don't see black people working in tech. You don't see women working in tech. You don't see mm. black women working in tech. So every, and especially when I had like no idea about the actual industry itself like that. I just knew that if they're making initiatives specific for women, yeah. I have to use my, have to use my diversity, I would say, <laughs> as I as I can. And sometimes you have to be delusional. Yeah. Because I'm like, you know what? Someone in this world had done it. So I'm not the first. So why like why not? Like, oh, because I got two two other people, so other people got two twos and got it. Do you know what I mean? Like, I feel like if you keep putting barriers on yourself, you're not gonna, you're just not gonna do anything. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? So you might as well you might as well try because if I didn't try, I would have not got the job. And yeah. literally other people that got firsts that were trying, do you know what I mean? That were trying to apply for jobs for a long time, didn't get jobs. So it is, do you know what I mean? And sometimes you have to rely on yourself because lots of times people will take a chance on you if they know that you're willing to learn yeah. or you're like, yeah, you're very motivated to kind of like be in the industry. So yeah. Wow. That's motivational. Yo, that's lot. Mad motivational. <laughs> mad motivational. So the first uh -huh. job, what, what, what did that entail? Was it, that wasn't consulting, right? Yeah. So it was technical consulting. Okay. So wow. what they do in this grad scheme. So, um, they keep you there for, I think it was six, was it? 16 weeks so for 16 weeks mm. um they upskilled me so they upskilled me in the different offerings that okay. they were providing wow. so um just for reference so with consulting right you are the service yeah. so you go and work at different jobs so you are the products well yeah. you are you're the yeah you're the service yeah so um each company has different things that they offer so i was working as a technical consultant at that time so the parallel um primary the primary thing my company was selling was testing so they wanted people to go into a company test what systems they had and then make sure that it passes quality assurance so when you as an end user you're able to see that product to what the product yeah. manager or business owner wants the end product to see so for example, if you're working for PLT, if I was like a tester for PLT and I was working on the app, I want to make sure end to end you're able to put something in your basket and you can pay and you can check out and you're going to get your delivery yeah. and you're going to get the right notifications, you're going to see the right screens and all that kind of stuff. And yeah. if you aren't, I raise a defect and I speak to developers, I liaise with business owners, I understand what the product is meant to do specifically. And yeah, so that was my role. Um, so I worked as a tester for different clients, lot, lot, worked as a, for that for a law firm, as well as like a telecommunications company. And then um, as well as that, I was interested in RPA, mm -hmm. which is like bots basically so you know how everyone's speaking about oh i'm trying to get the yeah. latest trainers or oh, i need to get a, uh, i need to get a yeah. bot they'll yeah. automatically do it yeah so um they had a vendor who was working with my company who was a bot platform so i would configure the bot to say okay when i start from here i need to click this click that whatever whatever yeah. and get the shoes at the end for example so i was making bots as well which i found yeah really interesting wow. and cool. yeah that's making cool. bots yeah yeah so okay. you configure how it worked to, to, to yeah to do the wow, testing that's crazy. yeah which was cool yeah that is so I so like crazy that. That cool. i was wondering what was it like for you going into the in cuz that that was obviously like your first like tech role right yeah so what was the learning curve like for you was it like difficult or was it like yeah Definitely. Yeah. Like even up to now, as much as I've been in tech for a long time, I definitely sometimes I do see a difference between people who've maybe gone and studied computer science mm -hmm. compared to myself who didn't. Mm -hmm. Um, just as because I feel like even with like specific softwares, right? Mm -hmm. That I as a technical consultant would have to go in there, literally learn quickly, upskill, and mm -hmm. the clients are, oh, this is my software, this is what it's meant to do. I have to look at you have to look at documentation, you have to look at videos, this is how it's supposed to act, you know, and all that kind of stuff. Every software is based under like core principles, and those core principles are in like computer science. Yeah. And when I sometimes I get sometimes I used to get stuck all the time because I won't understand, oh, what a string is or what object is yeah. or what, you know, those kind of things are. That's um, very technical though. Yeah, exactly. And That's I'm like, like oh, yeah, I was like right, developer. Eight, but minutes. but sometimes when you're doing the testing or you're, or things are going wrong, yeah. you, I get I was like, oh, this is annoying. However, 
I sometimes I would go to different clients and people that are earning maybe three times more, they're also confused. <laughs> so who am I to put, who am I to, to go hard on myself when yeah. other people, yeah. I, people, my managers are confused themselves. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And Do that's you know the what I mean? thing about technology, the tech, tech industry is not so straightforward. It's not no. like some linear type thing. Right? Exactly. It's like very... Yeah, it's very crazy. Exactly. Like, at times. sorry, like at the end of the day, there's no one person that can sit down and be like, I know this, like, unless they've configured the product themselves, yeah. they cannot tell you end to end. They know how everything will work. And if they integrate the different things, like yeah. it will work the same. So it's like, why am I coming to kill myself knowing like when p other people don't, like other people don't know what they're doing. Yeah. And as a consultant as well, a lot of things what you're doing is blagging. Yeah. You're pretending to know things. <laughs> don't say that. Don't say that on the back. You're mic. pretending. <laughs> you're pretending to know things. You're like, you know, I'm going to get back to you on that. Yeah. yeah you know what? I 100% I understand. I'm going to get back to you on that. Let me go back, look at my requirements. Um, You're lying. So it's kind of like, all the time, I realized that, listen, no one knows everything. Mm. So just say what you know, reassure the client, and then you just have to, like, put on a persona yeah. at the end of the day. Okay, wow. Yeah. <laughs> so the world of consulting, I have to yeah. say I can resolve this. Oh, my gosh. That's crazy. So, okay. So if we fast forward to today, yeah. your role slightly different, right? How do yeah. you get from Testa to... Yeah. Um, so in my technical consultants, consultant role, so I would work with, um, so testing would, there's a technical part of testing yeah. where you're maybe like automating things and that's where you actually like write code yeah. to test things. However, other, the other part of testing is more, more less technical, but more understanding complex products and, um, how they work. So, um, I was working, I used to just work with more of like people that worked in the software part. So the business owners who would speak to the person who owns the product to say, okay, this is how it's meant to work. Yeah. And the developers, because if something went wrong, yeah. so if there was a defect somewhere, I'm like, oh, this is not meant to work like this, or this app is yeah. not working how it's supposed to act. Just message, message the, you know, developers and we'll speak. And I was just like, you know what, I'm tired of this. I actually want to be in meetings, speaking, delegating, understanding requirements, speaking to stakeholders more. So I decided to move companies. So I moved to a smaller company initially, um, and then they were acquired by a bigger company. And um, I worked primarily in management consultant, as a management consultant in financial services. Okay. So financial services covers like trading platforms, banks, insurance firms, yeah, everything finance, yeah. so financial related but in the management space um so being a management in management it can be from being like a business analyst mm -hmm. to like a project manager to a scrum master yeah. to a product owner so yeah so now i'm in a management consultant so i'm speaking more with the client with like stakeholders and being able to speak on that as well as if i wanted to like do more technical mm -hmm. stuff and configure and deploy things yeah. so just best of both worlds yeah. personally for me Okay, so you prefer yeah. you prefer yeah. a bit of the blend. I like two, yeah. yeah, I like being able to work on my technical skills where I can. Yeah. And be there be an opportunity to yeah. because you want to work on a project where you're able to, you know, yeah. be technical if you want to. Um, but as well as like if I wanna speak to and engage with stakeholders, I can. Um, yeah. So I like the both. Okay. Yeah. Wow. Wow, that's crazy. Wow. Well done. Ah, thanks. Great, 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 <laughs> great, great journey, right? Um, so obviously you, you, you had an approach and I feel like, I don't know if, do you feel like your approach to how you got into, into the tech industry will still work t today? Um, now I feel like it's more, way more popular. Yeah. More people, young okay. people are now going, getting into Yeah. It, you get what I'm saying? Exactly. So, okay. So how I started, I, the thing is. I liked to tell other people's stories as well. So mm. working in the tech consultancy world, I was meeting all these other people who were like, oh, I work, I did English literature. Oh, I studied geography. Seriously? Oh, I studied, do you know what I mean? A, B, and C. And I was just okay. like, oh, so it's not, do you know what I mean? It's not just me who did the pivot. However, then and now is very different. However, I would say now there are more opportunities mm. for you to transition so more companies for example like there was a big four company who said now they don't really care about two ones mm. they're like okay we, we can yeah. accept two two degrees yeah there's like boot camps now that are funded by the government mm. who 
allow you to go into tech or they upskill you or pay you as an apprentice, apprenticeships, the digital yeah. apprenticeships. And there's more opportunities that I did not know about. Like yeah. maybe, I, I don't think they actually even existed like that. Mm -hmm. So because they understood that there's the, the demand was there, the demand still is there, I still think. However, you just have to maneuver and think about your skill set better, if that makes sense. Yeah. Because it is a competitive market. Yeah. It'll always be. I never say tech is easy, yeah. but I just say that it is an option because before it wasn't an option yeah. for a lot of people. Yeah. So I wouldn't say do, I wouldn't, I personally think stupid to say, mm -hmm. do the same what I did. However, I would say take advantage of every opportunity that is mm -hmm. given to you. Um, So you won't have to be like me that's making up, mm -hmm. you know, things or like trying to use the retail experience to, you know, to seem more techie than it is yeah. or like trying to, you know, only highlight that skills when you could literally say, oh yeah, I went to this internship or I did a 10 day boot camp, or yeah. I did a 16 week boot camp, like yeah. that was funded. So it's better to do, yeah, it's better just to look out, re yeah. I would, that's, that's my, yeah. yeah re -strategize. What, what would you say out of all of those things are like the best? Cause I'm thinking for somebody who's not got a degree in tech. Yeah. Maybe, maybe they've got a bit of experience somewhere else. Maybe they've okay. done, I don't know, audit or tax yeah. or law for like three years. And uh -huh. like, you know what I want to, or medicine, I want to get into like tech, into the tech industry. Mm -hmm. What would you say is the best way for them to, to like pivot into the tech, tech industry? So they have no experience within tech, but they have experience. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So all their graduate or a graduate. It's not that yeah. different, is it? Yeah, yeah, it's, it's not that almost, different. Right. Yeah. It's, it's almost the same. Okay. I would definitely say um streamline your learning. So um either look at two different things that you want. So depending on where you are and depending on your money, you look at number one, where am I in my life? Um, can I afford a boot camp or go for a boot camp? Because a lot of boot camps, if they're very much um, on demand they expect you to to be there like every day like yeah. work nine to five or do it nine to five or do it like within core hours or working hours am I able to you know dedicate 16 weeks to do that to upskill and train yeah. and um, some boot camps you know place you on somewhere but are you comfortable in your like home life yeah. to kind of do that because that's not the case for everyone yeah. you know or is it a thing where you have to look for a boot camp that's like yeah you know, after work or whatever. So definitely do that. Or is it apprenticeship? Am I, did I go to, did I go to university? Mm. You know, I know someone who, I was working with someone in the law firm who yeah. dropped out of uni um, her first year and then she picked up the apprenticeship and then yeah. she was doing what I was doing. Wow. I was getting qualifications and obviously she would get their work experience and she didn't have debt. Well, maybe she has debt for that one year, but <laughs> she, didn't, she didn't have debt. Yeah. But she didn't have debt, but, you know, apprenticeship, but, you know, sometimes apprenticeship salaries can vary, but, that was fine for her. She's getting her experience. She's getting paid. And that's what she wants to do. Are you someone who can actively like do courses? You know, some people can sit down and literally dedicate their own time and be like, I'm not going out today. I've got, I've got an online course to do. Yeah. Let me do that for two hours, whatever. You know, so you have to think about your route. Once you establish your route, then you think about the job role. What type of job role do you want to do? Is it something technical? Do you like data is it statistical are you more creative like what are your skill sets and then use that to refine your search okay. so i have um i do sessions like this with my platform the tech Bay platform which tries to help people um find their route into yeah. tech and i have like a blog post on this like different roles and yeah. i've kind of listed whether i feel like they're more creative or they're yeah. more for someone who's more statistical or for example, sometimes some people are more like, they don't want to do all of that. They just yeah. want to speak to clients and be more consulting based, but do that with tech and digital. Do you know what I mean? And understand new technologies that are out there and how businesses or companies can implement that. So are you more of a consulting person or, you know, are you yeah. more of like an in-house person? So once you find out your route, then you find out your job. Yeah. Then when you do that, then you give yourself a six month plan. And then, yeah, you give yourself a six, oh, nice. I would say, yeah, a good yeah. six months plan because you have to think about, yeah, you have to think about everything and you want to be in a good position to kind of do that. And you never know, like with a lot of boot camps, for example, they literally um, give you today after the boot camp, they put you with partners or like okay. they, you know. Really? So you can get a job. Yeah, yeah. A lot okay. of people do that. That's, That's the whole, cool. or they help you so they with get, careers. Help you get a job. Yeah, wow. they basically help you get a job. So, so like I said, loads of 
government free yeah. ones there's private there's private people who actually have like connections with companies who can do that yeah. so it's literally about you um employers they they really do look at what you know what courses what linkedin courses do you do or what courses did you do you know google google do free ones you know on my tech way platform on my resources page i literally list loads of different you know free resources that you can do or projects especially if it's like creative projects you're doing if you're going to ux ui you need to build your portfolio you need to understand be able to explain your portfolio to yeah. people if people are talking so um definitely take time within that six months if you can do it at six months or less you know you know people do it at different speeds but yeah. you won't but also you just have to realize that you're not going to know it's not you won't know everything mm -hmm. before like that's yeah. what i thought i was like oh my gosh i need to understand the fact <laughs> i i didn't and that was that was it and someone gave me a chance yeah yeah so and the rest requires if you're if you're religious it's god if yeah. the other rest is luck do you know what i mean yeah. if it's the universe it's luck or whatever you're you know <laughs> the rest lies with that mad that's amazing yeah. while you were like you know giving us your tips i was thinking about um non-tech roles right yeah, yeah you mentioned a few mm -hmm what hmm, this is let me Ooh, how, do I, how uh, do I ask this question i'm trying to ask this specifically because you mentioned a few non-tech roles yeah should you give us like you know what let's let's go with three non-tech roles yeah that you think not easy for people to get into but uh -huh. it's like there's there's a way there's a route for them to get into and what what you think like the starting salaries are for those non-tech roles and I've seen okay. this on your page, so that's all. Uh, hello, hello, hello. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I don't want to say any of them are easy. Like they're not easy. I, I don't want to say. Easy, yeah, I don't want to yeah. say any of them are easy. Honestly, I think that it's just dependent on skill set and your knowledge. Yeah. So, for example, Scrum Master. So, Scrum Master is a very lucrative, like non-technical role. Yeah. Um, and essence, being a Scrum Master is. And this, it's basically implementing like the agile way of working. And if you don't know what agile way of working is go to tech platform there's a resource around that <laughs> yeah. but um it's just a way of working style and right now i have companies are changing from their traditional working in waterfall to either like hybrid which is like a mixture of like waterfall and agile or just simply agile way of working where they essentially working collaboratively um in a team um being able to give updates together you everyone understands and knows what everyone's working on time there's loads of different timelines and deadlines that people um work with and as a scrum master you're the one that's organizing that so um because loads of companies are doing that maneuver of going from you know traditional ways of working to this more agile approach um agile being more like flexible essentially um they need that scrum master role so loads of people that, that's a very in demand role and i think a lot of scrum masters and i've heard people go from like working in like find like maybe like i remember one of my friend's brothers he was working in like um what was he working in um financial advice he was a financial advisor and he moved from that to becoming a scrum master and really? like 65k yeah and just then, like that yeah yeah he How went through he went yeah he went for a boot camp provider okay and yeah he went for a boot camp provider right. the provider also a lot of them sometimes help you with like interview tips and all that kind of stuff right so he went through a provider and then now he earned 65k and That's he literally good. that was a boot good do you get? Either. Do you get? And he jumped, and I was scrum wow. master role. And scrum master roles definitely do pay a lot of money. Yeah. So, um, yeah, especially now because of that transition, people just need the scrum masters to do that. Yeah. Um, what other roles? Did you say okay? Project managers. So, mm. every company in every industry yeah. usually has project managers, right? However, you know, in IT, project managers, you know, it is it is a like. It is a specific role and there's always like an IT project manager yeah, yeah. with everything. There's always like a good role. However, I would say it's in demand. Like a lot of people apply for project management roles yeah. and IT ones. So just have that in your head. But a lot of people go through different routes. So they go through like the Prince2 or the PI, PI, P, PI, um, PMP route. And there's, um, I think there's just another one depending on, you know, your country yeah. and um, other schools as well that will kind of help you understanding the project management um, life cycle. And also with that though, as well, they still, in the IT, they would still want you to understand yeah. how to work in Agile. But project managers as well, they can get a good like minimum 45 and above, I would say 45 and above, especially for the work that you'll be doing. That's dependent on the organization as well. So, 
you know, different organizations, different industries pay more for specific roles. So I would say scrum master, project manager. What else would I say would be a good job? So BA, business analyst is yeah. always a good, is always, is always a common one. Yeah. So working as a business analyst, um, understanding the business requirements and relaying that to the team and making sure that's on track. Um, BA is, I would say though, it's quite like, there's a big band that you mm. could sit in. That's very dependent on experience. Same with the project management, I would say as well. Depending on experience, depending on the type of team and the type of company you're working for. So I would say maybe like, I would say maybe a bit lower than maybe a project manager, maybe like a 35 mm -hmm. and then above, I would say for BA. But like I said, with IT, however, you can jump from one job and be getting paid like 35K and stay there for a year, make sh show that you're able to like yeah. implement things and then jump to another, Jamie jump to another role and it might be paying 65, do you know what I'm saying? So depending on if you're able to just stay in a place, get your experience and then yeah. jump, that's what the good thing is about tech, yeah. I feel like. And that's what drew me into the yeah. career as well. And I do like tech, I like innovation. So yeah. apart from the money, <laughs> I don't want to seem like money hungry, but I do, yeah, I knew tech was a money hungry. There's nothing wrong that's with that. Um, uh, well, yeah. Want to come into tech because of money. Because of money, I yeah. hear it, but yeah. yeah, I think I definitely would say though, with IT and everything in general, do something you like Yeah, because when it gets to nitty gritty, you're, you, you're you going to have to always learn. Like the learning never stops with IT. Do you know how many exams, certifications, certifications yeah. expire all the time. You're going to have to redo them. Someone adds something or integrates something new in a software. You have to learn it. Like, so if you don't like that industry, how, do you know what I mean? How is that going to work? Or, yeah. and it's long. Like you can't just be like, oh, I don't like software being a software developer. I don't like coding, but I'm going to do it. Like, are you gonna, do you know how long it, do you know what I mean? You know how much you would have to learn and understand and that yeah. compl how complex it is yeah. for you to just, do you know what I mean? And then be like, I'm not gonna like, you might not, you probably won't do as well as you, yeah. as you could. It's crazy, yeah. I mean, even though the money is good, yeah. Like you said, you might as well just do something you enjoy. Right? Yeah. Like not enjoying it. Exactly. Like like I feel like in tech, the why I like the industry so much is that if one day I'm just like, you know what? No, I don't want to be technical. Or I don't want to be, yeah. you know, because I can like jump. I'm like, oh, you know, cybersecurity is there. Oh, data is there. Oh, innovation is there. Cloud. Yeah. You know, what I mean? someone's going to invent something new and I could like that. Yeah. So, yeah. <laughs> That's, yeah, no, nah, it's, uh, you know what? You were saying something and I was thinking, right? Like in terms of like the work, right? Yeah. So you were talking a bit about work-life balance, right? Yeah. You work from home much so um now i work and now i work from home three days a week okay and i go in two days what was it a week. before was it full mm, yeah so my it depends on the it depends on the client it depends on the client so my last client um everyone was kind of scared everywhere so it was mainly working from home and i just yeah. came in once in a while yeah yeah okay. and what would you say i want to dispel some myths here because mm -hmm. when, when you think about technology everybody's thinking yeah. about the google or free food Oh yeah, work two hours a day. You know Child. when you see them people like, oh, TikTok. life in the day. Oh, I only I've got up at one and I'm working till yes. three, and then I'm going home. <laughs> It's not, guys, it's not like, oh, how can I, like, like I said, industry, um, industry matters in everything you do. Yeah. So some, some people's life, I know, for example, right, if you work for a startup, yeah, working for a startup organization, because you're a startup organization, they don't have time to employ like, yeah. or they don't have the money to employ a lot of people so you'll be doing most of the workload for example and even now for example now with the whole dispelling all this you know work you know day in the life etc etc yeah, uh, yeah it, it, tech is it, as much as it we just have a little bit more money i don't know how to explain we just had like a lot we have more money so we can do stuff like or have sometimes have free breakfast and some some you know certain clients might give you free yeah. breakfast or whatever, whatever however you're still working like you still have contractual hours, especially if you're doing something like consulting. If the project's not done and you're doing TikTok, uh, do you know what I mean? Like, <laughs> what? Like, somebody's lying. Yeah. Somebody's lying. Yeah. Like, you know, and I think, however, though, I do have a controversial opinion with stuff like that because, you know, some, you know, maybe, maybe it's just, 
I, I'm not. You, you, they're, they're doing work. You just probably, we're just probably lying to you on TikTok. That's the thing. <laughs> lying. We're just lying. Yeah, like if you generally thought that this person was just doing Pilates yeah. and going to a yoga class and eight and then work for yeah. two hours and three hours and whatever, and she didn't do the person didn't do work on the weekend yeah. to compensate that or whatever. <laughs> do you get like other people? People's works metrics, yeah. the metrics are different for every company. Yeah. So some pe- companies are very much like, oh, we just want you to make sure you get the work done, yeah. right? And then you're fine. So that person, when they did that TikTok on that day, they probably just, you know, did like a a, a nine, a, a six to a six to six the next yeah. day. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Or some some companies very much like, you no, know, you need to work that set those set hours I yeah. give you, or there's only like flexi time, like you can start at ten, finish at four yeah. instead of nine to five. But that's about it. Yeah. Do you get? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I've never, you know, I've never come across anybody or spoken to anybody that's told me that they work two, three hours a day in technology oh, industry. Gosh, I've never. What? You, know what I'm saying? you have never. down periods. Don't get me yeah. wrong. You have down periods. Depending on the line of work you do, like with consulting, if you're not on a project, you'll be on bench time where it's just upskilling and training and whatever. Yeah. But you know you're still people still monitor and checking your training and sometimes just expect okay this needs to be done whatever or the next product requires you to have that training so have you done that training you know what i'm saying like yeah. but resting sleep, sleeping only work for two hours like come on yeah <laughs> yeah no nah, it's, yeah, it's, it's not true it's a lie it's a lie people's a lie, it's a lie. you're gonna have to work hard if you want to Exa- come into this industry. exactly exactly what well, you think they're gonna give you a high salary or a good salary let's say what and you're not working for it and you're not working for like, it don't make sense like that. it doesn't it yeah. does not it doesn't run like legit more time a company rewards you if they know you're putting in work if yeah. that makes sense well good companies anyway yeah so if you're not then i don't know I don't know. I, I don't know. Maybe I need to apply for that. Maybe I'm hating from outside the club. I need to apply. I haven't found this place. I haven't yet. found this place. Um, what what other sites would you recommend for uh, that are good for people to find like um, jobs and also mm-hmm. like these boot camps? So you m- mentioned target jobs. I've yeah. target jobs in the past. They're great. Is there any other? So um, I know. Platforms? Okay, so there's Otto, there's Grad Cracker. If you're a graduate and you come from a science degree, there's um, there's specific ones depending on whether you what like way what angle you're coming in from. So, um, for example, other organisations such as Coding Black Females yeah. or Black Girls in Tech, for example, they specifically companies are specifically asked to go on that job board to um because they want like black women or you know okay. black women in development or whatever so look for sometimes look for job boards specifically that want to hire minorities in in that specific area there's auto target jobs there's always linkedin if you are applying on linkedin make sure your linkedin profile is up to date i don't i'm going to say it again make sure your linkedin profile is up to date when applying for those jobs there's read there's monster there's indeed even those ones that you guys feel like, oh, I was just applying for customer service. They're not going to have IT roles. You'll be surprised, yeah. like, you know, putting yourself out there. And yeah, I can't I can't remember any more from the top of my head, but they're definitely on my lot, Instagram no. or my no, TikTok. No, you gave a lot. Yeah, <laughs> I tried. Yeah, the yeah. rest, I've, I've done, I've done a TikTok on them. But yeah, but there's a lot of different job boards and the Techway platform, we're working on our job board as well. So um, companies who specifically want to hire diverse talent or minorities um, will kind of work with these specific organizations who yeah. want more diversity. Have you ever thought about like working for the big tech companies? Like, you know, the Google, yeah. Amazon. Have you ever thought about going there? Yeah, so I've always wanted to do like a cheeky Microsoft. However, child, the lane of the people. The lane, the lane. That's the thing though. So there's always big risks with going with a bigger company. Um, you know, right now tech are kind of is kind of going through this period yeah. where they're laying off a lot of people. So people's jobs have just literally been cut with either like you know they've been made redundant or you know they just haven't got their job anymore so i have but i have to have like a specific role that i really you know i really yeah. want to work work in or work for and i have a lot of friends who work in those big tech companies and they, they love it so i think it just depends on you yeah and how you feel really yeah but how do i feel i don't know I've, i'm i'm doing with consultancy i work for big like 
clients. So, and my consultants is quite a big consultancy. So sometimes I'm just like, I have the big, you know, yeah, working for already. Big, yeah. Exactly. Yeah. So. so I almost feel like there's no difference. Exactly. Yeah, you raised a good point about like with the tech industry. And that this is the other thing. Although there's so many opportunities, the opportunities have sh- shrunk a mm-hmm. lot. Yeah. Of all the layoffs. So exactly. It's actually not as, there's not that many roles actually. I don't yeah. think, I, I haven't really seen... Not that I was looking. Mm. <laughs> Glad I was looking for like graduates. Got him. Or like Got entry him. Level. <laughs> Got him. But I haven't seen like entry level that many. But I don't know. I, I don't look a lot. So I, don't, I, can't, yeah. I can't say if, you know. Like I said, I think it's so much easier. Just go through yeah. a place where like it's either like an internship or yeah. like a, um, a boot camp or like a skills based you know something or go through referral i feel like it's so much easier to go through that avenue than to like go yourself and look but yeah definitely i think that there there is a shortage or there's just now this thing where they're just going to hire people who are more experienced for these roles so someone who's maybe mid to senior is now maybe doing like more of a junior or high end junior role so some that someone else could have taken like that came out of uni just because there's a lot of these layoffs yeah it's a bit yeah it's a bit it's a bit it's a bit wild actually it's Um, crazy talk to us about your platform techway yeah techway platform so we are rebranding to a new name but um should I, should I tell rebranding. you? Rebranding. Yeah, I had to rebrand. Okay. No, I had, yeah, I had to rebrand. So, oh, um, is this a... no, 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 it wasn't, no, okay. it was copyright. No, because people get confused. Um, people thought my, my platform was only for like women. So I was just like, oh, okay. Oh, okay. And then, yeah. What did people, guys actually, yeah, actually yeah. Like, oh, can... yeah, yeah, yeah. So oh, they would come. Oh, so, okay. um, so guys, so basically, <laughs> um, I called myself the tech bay when I started tech influencing. Yeah. And then, um, because the demand, of what I was what I was doing and I didn't want to mix me doing my brand like the brand deals and the stuff that I do mixed in with what I try and help people to get into tech mm-hmm. so I created the tech bay platform mm-hmm. so which was just like my name the platform yeah. <laughs> um and that was um so the tech bay platform provides opportunities resources um and job applications to people who are looking to pivot into tech um specifically focusing on women black people and people who have no prior experience um who want to pivot into the industries so we work with other companies who um want the same who want who care about diversity okay. or who actively are looking for fresh new talent yeah. to upskill and train to get them onto their company and to work in that company um and to kind of yeah to get them into tech more so that's what the tech bay platform does wow 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 and um can you talk about so 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 you do that from their perspective so you help people Mm -hmm. you actually help get people into into the into job yeah so i've had like a lot of people where they've either asked me for advice or um or i've forwarded opportunity and they're like oh my god yeah i applied and i got this job job or whatever so you know i helped one girl and she got like a cloud a cloud devops role i kind of went through like the she was she was close but she just just the last interview bit and then those when it's just your last interview it's just personality and it's just making sure you know you look better than the other you know candidates they're interviewing so it's you know we're helping them um i also create like events working with people where they would ask questions and get like guest speakers to either speak on their subject knowledge area or um yeah resources or anything that I come across so because everything I do I've been I feel like I've influenced enough like two and a half years from like covid 2020 okay. to like clubhouse yeah. making events on clubhouse to that so my feed and everything all the opportunities i see is very curated to tech okay. or i get people that message me and say hi i want this is you know i have this opportunity can you share it to you know people so yeah. i either put all those resources uh, or it's people that are subject area experts in like, for example, UX UI, they make like a guide or something like free guides. I just make sure I put it onto the TechBay platform, tag okay. them. Obviously I give credit to whoever's made it or whatever okay. and say, oh yeah, this person, whatever. Cause sometimes people are just like lost and they don't know yeah. where. So I just try and yeah. yeah, put it on a central location um, for people to help, just yeah. to help people. I mean, it's needed. I, I wish, I always say this, but I know I wish I had like a guide. I did not know what I was, no, that's mm. a lie. No, no, it's not, no, it's not a lie. Mm. I, I didn't know, I knew what roles were out there kind of because okay. of my master's, but I didn't really okay. know what I was doing. If, what did you study for master's? Uh, it was called business systems analysis and design. So it was a technology. Okay. 
masters. But, okay. And yeah, okay. Like looking back at it, it's like, oh yeah, of course, business analysis, project manager. But mm-hmm. I was applying to any job. I was applying yeah. to develop, de- software developers. I didn't even Anything. know what they really did. Mm. Testers. Yep. And I luck, I was lucky to get a business analyst job. I was like, okay, yeah. cool, I'll do this. And it, it kind of suited me. Um, so yeah, resource like that is like really, really valuable. Uh, so yeah, make sure listeners, watchers that you go and check that out. Cause yeah, yeah, it's very, very important. Um, I wanted to ask you, you were mm-hmm. part of Tech 100? Yeah, yeah. Tech, tech Women 100, World. Yeah, yeah Tech it. Women yeah, 100. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. So when, when did that happen? So that happened 2021 okay. in November. Yeah. Amazing. Yeah. Talk to us about that. How did that How does come that happen? About? Yeah. Okay, guys, I'm going to tell you. If you don't nominate yourself, no one's going to nominate you. <laughs> so I know I legit sent it to my friends. Yeah. I was like, guys, nominate me for this awards. I'm being so serious. Like, I feel like you should do that. I've, I, I did not. I, I literally nominated for myself for the awards. And then they basically, what happens is that you nominate for the award, and then other people either, like, then I got the shortlist. So I got shortlisted. So not everyone that gets nominated gets shortlisted, okay. right? So they go, ev- the awards, um, tech, so when we are, we are, we are we are the city, right? So that's an organization. Um, it's created by this amazing lady called Vanessa. Um, so she basically helps women who are in the corporate world yeah. kind of elevate. She does like events and everything like that. So she um, created the women um, tech women one hundred sector of that, and she gets like amazing sponsors from like yeah. big fours and all that kind of different big companies to sponsor those awards so i nominated myself or i put myself forward to be like okay cool maybe i should get nominated yeah. however then i saw the shortlist i was shortlisted but i told people like maybe like a couple of days i put it on my instagram like a couple of days or I tweeted it a couple of days before it was closing because i saw the amazing women women sorry other women who were nominated and i was like yeah this is not gonna work because <laughs> there was a me- there was literally scared. yeah because people were doing like biotech these people working for the army okay. you know people that were like doing crazy amazing things and i was just like oh i was like it's three days let me just put myself and people like, oh I vote. don't worry i vote for you oh i like, don't vote for you or like some people i help like, oh, i vote for you blah blah blah, blah. I was like, oh thanks you know whatever and i was happy with just being the short jamming shortlisted so I would just put, oh, award nominated. Like it was fine or whatever. Or some things I hadn't like put myself forward through someone and nominated me. I was like, oh, okay, cool, whatever. And then when it came out and I was like, what? I was top women on I was like, what? And yeah, so that day. <laughs> yeah, I, yeah, I was like, oh my gosh, my first award. So yeah. Um, Many more. Yeah, it was good. It continue, right? Thank you. Yeah. Amen to that. Yeah. Yeah. And this is the thing, right? Like I think this is just, you know. You just got to keep trying at the end of the day, right? That's like, it. you can't just, you know. Exactly. I mean, if you applied what you doubted yourself. I know, but it was the, <laughs> it was the lineup. The lineup was looking at me yeah. like, oh, like, I was, was like, intimidated. Oh, I was intimidated. Yeah. I was like, nah, it was, like, it was literally three days before. And literally, and it's about, I don't, and then at the end, so after a while we got like, we linked, we um, met up with everyone else who was the Tech Woman 100, who yeah. was a part of the world and everything like that. And then I spoke to one of the guys who was in the judging panel and then they were read, they basically read through why, because people have to say why they're going to nominate. They can't just nominate, you'd be like, select, or they have to, why did they, you know, whatever. And then they, they chose. So the process, he was saying that he literally, co- they cover the names and then he just reads what people say or what people have big. And then I was just like, oh, like, the fact that people took their time out to yeah. write and say, oh, you know, it impacts me yeah. through A, B, and C or did this and that. Like, I love my friends and family, but they're not enough. They're not enough to like, there's not enough of them yeah. to just vote me for, do you know what I mean? Yeah. Vote, vote, um, vote for me for fun, if that yeah. makes sense. So yeah, that was, yeah, that was good. But you had your tech day platform at this time. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Oh, uh, yeah, you, uh, but. Why you say that you did Oh, but the lineup, the lineup, the lineup, <laughs> okay, the lineup <laughs> threw me off. So I, 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 met, I was like, yeah, I'm going to, I'm going to know But was there whatever. anybody else on that list doing what you're doing? Yeah, so there's what, always what other, yeah, so there's okay. other, like, there's loads of other organizations yeah. that do similar thing that like, do similar mm. stuff that the Tech Break platform does. Mm. However, they might, like, niche in a specific area. So some yeah. people's for women, some yeah. people's for black women, some people's for, like, coding for black women. Mm. Some Sometimes it's um, data, women in data. You know, there's loads of different sections. And I definitely just, I don't believe that there's, there's a lack of anything, if that makes sense. So something that I don't cover doesn't mean that someone else shouldn't yeah. cover. So yeah. if someone did like a black men in text, you know, something like that or whatever, 
and they specifically did it for that niche, then listen, there's no, I don't feel like there should ever be like a lack of, lack there of organization. Yeah. So yeah. I don't really see it as comp competition. We always yeah. like, especially Work the ones together, in London, yeah. always partner. Yeah. So when people have events, we partner with our events. If okay. people have events, I will always support, do you know what I mean? Support, yeah. retweet, or whatever the events. So especially in like the, people are trying to get more like black people or minorities we always like partner yeah so we always see like we kind of know off each other anyway okay that makes sense yeah and yeah, no, no, i agree i agree with partnership and that's why i bring in people on the podcast ah. right, guys we just uh, <laughs> swung swung the mic away yeah and that's yeah that's why you know it's all about partnership and i think you know you grow faster with partnerships yeah um oh man it's been such a great conversation what do you have next to yourself i mean What's next? What's next? So the Takeaway platform will um, be working with other companies to kind of give you guys insight days, uh, more workshops, more boot camps, which is really, really good. Um, what else is next, child? I don't even know. I don't even know. I don't more, hopefully more, you know, award nominations, more, more impacts more like connecting with people like yourself and speaking and being more out there yeah. and yeah, more speaking like about like diversity and being a woman and the problems we face because there's always problems. Mm -hmm. So yeah, being, yeah, being more vocal and trying making more of an impact where I can. Okay. Love that. I love that. So amazing. And uh, where can people find you? So you can find me on Instagram at Love Sham. So it's love with two E's at the end, underscore Sham, C H A R M S. And that's the same on Twitter. And on TikTok, it's the Tech Bay and um, the Tech Bay, www.thetechbayplatform.com. If you want any resources, if you want to see when our latest events are, more time they're free. So you're free, feel, feel free to attend. And yeah, and the Tech Bay platform. Um, on Instagram too so amazing amazing thank you so much Charmaine <laughs> I really really appreciate you coming today and just you know what sharing your story sharing your insights so 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 valuable as well it's always nice to hear somebody else's journey you know going into into the tech world especially somebody that didn't study technology I think yeah it gives people like hope that they can get into the tech industry Do you know what I'm saying I think a lot of people have this like misconception that you know that or all us technology technology studied you know technology when actually it's not always the case so yeah it's always nice um and yeah you're doing well in your career you know ah, what I'm saying? and now you're you. helping others you know and yeah. that's i think that's a very very important thing you know i'm gonna say this hmm. I'm, like, I'm not gonna get cancelled no 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 i'm gonna say it so no i gotta say it some black people unfortunately hey they get to a certain level and they don't Oh yeah, put the ladder down. No, they don't. They don't, and I, I, I don't think that's, and I, it's not just black people. I'm just saying anybody, mm. right? If, mm -hmm. I feel like if you get experience, you owe it to mm -hmm. yourself and to others to also pass it down because you yeah. got it from someone else, right? Exactly. So why are you keeping it to yourself? That's how I feel. So yeah, it's amazing what you're doing. Proud. Uh, keep doing, keep doing you. Do you have any final words for the listeners? Yeah, I think be delusional. That's, I feel like that's the best word. Be delusional. Just why not? Why not you? Why can't you do that role? Why is it not something you can do? Why not you? Just, yeah, just be delusional. Sometimes you have to be delusional with what you want to do. And I feel like delusions can meet either if you're religious, it's faith or luck or, you know, or whatever it is. And that can coincide to like opportunity. So be ready, be delusional, be ready, but then stay delusional. And then, you know, when your opportunity comes, you'll be ready to take up amazing amazing final words lovely words there from charmaine herself thank you so much for listening to this episode of the takeover experience and we'll see you next week's episode